Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Hammer. This is episode 16, and uh, as you can see already, we are joined today by no other than Rob Fox himself, so. Hi elves. Yeah, and uh, like <laughs> like always, we have uh, Savage and Seb. So, uh, how's everyone going? Fine. Good. <laughs> so yeah, obviously we are uh, going to be talking about some high elves today, and uh, we need to bring in help. Because, uh, you know, Seb and Savage and I uh, are pretty uh, fantasy illiterate, so. <laughs> so we brought in uh, Fox today, uh, as well as talking about uh, High Elves on the lab and as our main topic, we are also going to be talking about our normal stuff, you know, Shame Hammer, Unit of the Week, and uh, Hobby Tip and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, we'll start it off like always and kind of go a week in review where we'll talk about what we've done in the hobby in the last week. Uh, so who wants to start today? Uh, I'll start because I, I haven't been on for uh, you know a month or so. Okay. Um, Brett and I have uh, started our uh, our pile of um, miniature collections that we're going to use for uh, kit bashing for our role playing games. I've been uh, doing some light conversions and uh, painting up some uh, uh, Empire flagellants, so we can use them as chaos cultists. So that's that's kind of what I've been doing, and then reading the heck out of this book, which I'm very very excited to talk about. Okay, sounds like you had a good week then. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Sebo Savage, who wants to go next? Back to oh, jump in. Okay. <laughs> so uh, just been finishing off the Path of the Elder series, which is a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful thing. And uh, crawling around in the dark on Kalth, uh, trying to get Mark of Kalth finished before we jump into the Imperial Guard uh, for the next Black Bolt. And also discovering the joys of Kill Team, which has been nice. Kind of Geometry Wars meets Space Marine, which is... So yeah, not so much modelling, but keeping myself in with all the 40k stuff. Okay, awesome. Okay, Savage, it's on to you. Have you done anything this week? Anything at all? <laughs> I'll take that as a no. I played a game. Yes, you did, we 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 did play a game. That was something. Uh, you want to you want to kind of talk about that? I guess. Uh, I suppose we can. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to play a thousand points. Um, it was the uh, called Relic. Yeah, I think you're a little bit quiet, so you want to adjust your microphone again. But yeah, we we, we played a thousand points. Uh, it was the relic. Uh, I was uh, playing Space Wolves. Savage was playing uh, uh, demons, Nurgle demons with uh, some chaos allies. So yeah, and it was all going your way until the hell drake came on. <laughs> yeah, uh, if. I mean, most of you probably would have seen it, but I did do a post on dealing with the Hell Drake that uh, I guess I'd like to kind of mention now that my whole idea with that article was not to say, like, the best units to take it down. It was just how to deal with it if you don't have units to take it down. Um, I think a lot of people kind of got confused about kind of what I was going for. But, yeah, in the game, it was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I didn't really have anything to take down a Hell Drake. I had a quad gun, but really not something that you can take down a hell drake with so yeah i kind of had to figure out a way to still win the game and losing what a third of my army you took down three squads of long fangs with the hell drake yeah i think all you had left was i had one i had one squad in a room priest yeah but i did win cuz i did have the relic so yeah uh so i've been doing just mostly commission work again this week i kind of lost track of day and night really. I, I just slept when I, I was tired and uh, ate when I was hungry uh, and I kind of lost track of time. So that was my week. So just, unlike you. <laughs> it, was, it was worse. It was bad this week. Uh, I, you know, I woke up and I'm like paint until I was tired and then just fall asleep and wake back up again and it was really bad so I'm kind of taking today and tomorrow to kind of sort that out before I get back into it. Who's bad? So yeah, so we'll uh we'll move on and throw it over to Seb uh with news and rumors. Okay, okay. So to start off, um Fate two twelve is coming back. We mentioned last week that he'd been taken down. Uh but he made a video from the last day of Valhalla and he's been making some more recent 
uh, rumor videos. Um, apparently, he wasn't contacted by Games Workshop before Google took his site down. Um, and he's got a counterclaim in the works with them and a new site going live hopefully next week um, which will be about all tabletop games and that'll be fayette212.com so yeah get ready for that coming um, the German Games Day we mentioned that it's going to be a bit more expensive but they might have a few more people coming um, it's gone from 50 euros no it's gone up to 50 euros from 30 euros but Nick Keim amongst others including the Warhammer Forge displays will be there but uh, sadly no more free t-shirts and minis they're only available to buy now uh, another new back library offering free shipping until June, which is exciting. A bunch of new books and a bunch of old books with new spangly covers, including the Soul Drinkers. And uh, I believe we have a picture for this one. They are yeah, the rumours are, and again take it with salt because they are rumours. Necromunda seems to be coming back, um, originally with a limited edition release, and then apparently a normal release with uh, new updated models. So this is kind of odd. I want to throw it over to the rest of the guys because we kind of said last week they were getting rid of specialist games. So yeah, that's what's an interesting one. It's kind of my thought. Like, were, are they getting rid of those specialist games to re-release them later on, or is it just Necromunda? Because I know they they throw it out there and say we're we're getting rid of them, and they kind of see how many how what's the most popular one that people are whinging about, you know, not being around anymore. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, what is what does everyone else think? Um, personally, it's this, this is. You know, game, Games Workshop is getting pretty big nowadays, and you know, it's it's a popular thing that goes beyond just the uh, the tabletop. And you know, Warhammer, especially 40k, is just such a known thing. Like people who don't even play tabletop are getting involved with the community of Warhammer 40,000, um, introducing these specialist games and possibly re-releasing them, so that you know, maybe someone that doesn't want to drop. Six hundred, seven hundred dollars into a forty k army. You know, then their buddies can you know pick up one of these boxes for a hundred and fifty dollars, and you know have that immersion into the world. And you know, maybe Games Workshop is possibly trying to expand. You know, Fantasy Flight does a ton with the license, so maybe this is just a way for them to expand beyond the the tabletop. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I've said it before, like, you know, when new releases come out and they start giving us more stuff, you know, it's always a positive thing to get more. Um, so, I think if they were going to try and do more of, like, an entry level to the game for people that didn't want to throw down the money, honestly, I think it would be better to go more of a stay with the core rules, stay with the main, um, main rule book, and just make, uh, maybe a little bit slightly edited rules to make it playable at a smaller level. Like, there's already rules out there for that, but make them more, you know, out there, because people, you know, a lot of people don't know about Kill Team, a lot of people don't know about those smaller size things. But, yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, with, with that in mind, I mean, you got Apocalypse and stuff like that, and last time I was in a games workshop, there were a lot of people who refused to play 40k unless it was on an Apocalypse level. Like, that was, you know, World of Warcraft, that was the end game, you know, rating tier was Apocalypse and stuff like that. I think uh, Games Workshop is kind of shying away from that to allow uh, bigger games. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, especially with Apocalypse Two coming later this year, probably. Uh, Savage, any words on this? You been kind of quiet. Thoughts on uh, yeah. Necromunda or a smaller 40k game? I don't know. They already got like kill teams and stuff like that, so maybe. But I, I don't really see a, a big need for it. No? So, are are we assuming this is going to be that mystery box that's coming? What in two months? But there, there's still been. It, this could be the mystery box, but again, the blood a new limited edition Blood Bowl set was supposed to be has been talked about quite a lot for that so and again that's another specialist game so maybe they are just going to be releasing limited edition sets a few new bits not keeping it going but just keeping there something that you can get and just get on with it yeah it's from what i can tell in the last couple of years that uh, rumors have been really bad at guessing uh at guessing the the mystery boxes like they're pretty much dead on about everything else but the mystery boxes have just been uh you know these like wild ideas and it's never that like no one from what, as far as I can tell, uh, guess like Dread, Dreadfleet, Deadfleet, whatever it was, was going to be the mystery box. So, yeah. that that was like 
yeah. I, so maybe maybe it is going to be Necro Wonder as the mystery, mystery box. Who knows? Again, it's just rumors right now. So I guess I think we'll uh, move on to the next news and rumors. Uh, you know, he, um, College of Artisans, the one world, are running a, uh, a couple of sets of days. There's the 5th to the 9th of August, and then the 12th to the 16th of August. It's a, yeah, it's a huge, huge immersion day when you can just get hobbying, do all sorts of stuff, plays, there's demonstrations, there are uh, workstations, tools and things, all sorts of Forge World cleanup services, and resin minis, there's lots of staff on hand to help them, master classes and painties. Painting and hobby demonstrations, it's a huge, yeah, a huge come and come along and get involved for a long time, uh, for a good, yeah, three or four days. Yeah, so it's exciting, it's a tw 12 plus, and 12 to 50 must be, <laughs> must be have a responsible adult with them, so not savage. Um, <laughs> and t t tickets are 160 quid, and on sale, they're on sale from the first of this month. So yeah, it's a big, exciting day. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, things like these this haven't been happening already. I mean, you've got a uh, blue tail painting with uh, Valhalla, where they have their kind of weekend of kind of games and campaigns and stuff that they have going, and that seems pretty successful. And I think you see see kind of more often these like local stores and things like that having these events where you come in, use their paints and and things. So I'm I'm not surprised to see something like this at a more large scale it's just you know uh, is that not that bit bigger than the Horus Hen Heresy weekend Earth sort of thing yeah I mean um any thoughts on it anyone it's so it's it's 160 dollars to go do what you would normally do at your friend's house or <laughs> at a cultural workshop mm -hmm. okay that's that's, that's my question <laughs> <laughs> they have access to all of the uh, their Warmer World services and facilities, including Central Miniatures Hall, Hobby Centre, and the Bugman's Bar, though, Fox. Do you have Bugman's oh, Bar at your oh, friend's oh, house? Oh, Hello, if, if, that, if that includes my uh, bar tab, absolutely. I will. <laughs> Does it, Elf. like, usually cost to get into Warhammer World, or is it just a store that you can walk into like normal? Because if those I... things are already going to be available to anyone that walks into the store, <laughs> it's, uh... I, I do presume it, but there probably is a an entry fee for Women World. I'm not sure off the top of my head, actually. Um, I, I, maybe I'll take a pilgrimage there one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if they had, I guess, like, what, heavy metal team painters there and helping you paint and, I don't know, some tips. It, I mean, I like the idea. The price seems a little crazy, but, yeah. Yeah, 160 pounds, you said, right? Yeah, 160 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's insane. That, that's insane. That's like two hundred dollars. There are there are entry to masterclass paintings and hobby demonstrations apparently though. But yeah. <laughs> or I could buy the how to paint Citadel miniatures and like buy every single hobby tool for like under that. <laughs> yeah, the how to uh, how to paint Citadel miniatures comes with a DVD as well. <laughs> yeah. I do I do wonder how how much of the four days they are just pushing stuff on you. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they'll uh, have these limited edition paints, make make you use them in like a tutorial, and be like, you know, you can buy these for another two hundred bucks. Except you should try and sneak in. But uh, <laughs> but again, I don't I don't want to just like look at the negatives for this. I mean, sure, it's a it's a way to get money, and uh, but I mean, like I said, you don't have to. That no, they're not forcing you to, you know, you, if you want to keep playing this hobby, you have to come to these days and put down 200 bucks. Uh, it's just, it's another option that you can uh, go to if you, you know, feel like you have to. It's no, oh, it's 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 almost like a, a giant nerd party that you just pay a lot of money to go to. You know, you get to meet some some people, and uh, if you get access to uh, Bugman's Bar, like I said, if, if they're if they're paying for my drinks. I will literally go there, like, down seven beers, and then base coat all the models I need for the rest of the year. It's, yeah, it's Games Workshop. Like, there, there's not going to be free beer, is there? <laughs> is there even going to be beer? It was, it's in England, isn't it? So I, I, would, I presume there should be beer, or ale. What? Your rivers aren't <laughs> beer? Aren't a beautiful golden <laughs> ale that streamed down? Bang on. 
Okay. So um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, move along with the news and rumors. Moving along. So fifth edition codexes are going digital. Space Marines, Necrons, and Grey Knights have gone so far. So it looks like they're working backwards with the fifth editions. Um, so it's been suggested Dark Elder will be the next one to go digital as the new ones come out. Um, okay, this next one, I believe we have a picture of the new Forge Worlds uh, Squig, Squig Gobber. That's a tricky one to pronounce. Uh, <laughs> yep, there we go. Wonderful. And this Squid Gobber, where's he gone? Well, this is a huge new monstrous creature. It's a huge beast that is fed squigs and noxious liquids to chew and fire them at the enemy. It's the potential to either escape or explode, so it's definitely a dangerous thing to use. But yeah, that's up for pre-order now, um, from the, the 31st of March when it'll be available, and it's £42. Yeah, it's a big, exciting goblin thing in with Bob. <laughs> Beasty, creaturey thing. So that's that one. Uh, so th we also have some more fantasy uh, release rumours um, with regards to the Lizardmen. This is going to be the next fantasy release, we believe, either in August or October, depending on the summer waves and releases. Um, and this is the, the, the first of all the yeah the Lizardmen rumours that seem to have started to come our way. Um, I'm not sure if this will mean anything to any Lizardmen uh, collectors, but Nikkei the Wanderer Mini is supposed to be one of the new things. Carnosaur Cavalry as a rare choice. New Spawn a la Chameleon. A dual kit with big monster slash machine of the old ones. A new Saurus on cold ones. Uh, swarms are now more useful. Slams will be more expensive, and there are no sacred spawns. So, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, does that make sense to you, Fantasy Boy? <laughs> yes, it, it does. Um, I'm, I'm especially interested about the. Uh, the uh, the the uh, slan is it slan or slan I think it's supposed to be pronounced slan um, you know these these guys are you know the original wizards yo so I mean they they have some pretty powerful wizards in the high elves but we you need to remember that the uh, the slan were the one that taught the uh, high elves how to use magic so uh, I'm pretty interested are to these see these giant fat like frog guys that just yeah they're around? the giant fat frog guys that's still on the throne they they were wizards before wizards were cool. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm, I'm interested I'm interested to see uh, see how uh, more powerful they get. So pretty excited to see that. Are they the guys that have the, like the, the stargates on their backs? That they all look awesome. Uh, the, well, so there's the, the, yeah, they're the, the the fat frogs that sit on the the floating throne. Good times. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, sticking with fantasy, dwarves appear to they'll be coming in the beginning of 2014 um, after Dark Elves, and Britannia book possibly coming for the beginning of 2015, which uh, would be for the possibly rumored release of the new set. You uh, had some ideas what that might entail, didn't you, Fox? Yeah. Um, well, the thing the thing with the the fantasy sets is usually they're a lot more random. You know, 40k you're getting a Space Marine army with something that's generally not Space Marines. I mean, even Chaos, you only got, what, six power-armored models? But, um, no, with Fantasy, it's pretty random. Like, nobody would have guessed Hiles and Skaven, you know? You always think it's going to be, like, Empire and Orcs, Empire and Chaos, or, uh, one time it was Lizard Men, Bretonia. So, uh, I'm taking a guess. They're pushing off the Bretonian least, they're pushing back the Wood Elf release, and then they're pushing back Beastmen release. So, I think it's going to be those three, but usually how it works is they try to pick, you know, a balanced army, one that's kind of, you know, the elite shock troops, and then the other one that's cheap infantry. And uh, I think with kind of how Beastmen have been focused on, you know, being the bane of mankind, I have a feeling it's going to be uh, Beastmen and Bretonia. I don't, I don't want to say, say, like, uh, I knew it, but uh, when the, the fantasy set come out, like, I'd kind of guess Skaven because they did... Um, like back then, at least, like the starters when they came out, you, you'd get uh, one army from a codex that was just released before the update, and then you would get an, an army that was released after the update. And uh, it kind of happened with with that, except high elves didn't get a full release; they just got some new models after the update. But because it was kind of the same thing with like Blackreach, how orcs got released end of fourth, and then they got the new edition starter and then Space Marines got released after that. And that's kind of how it worked, so that, that, that's why I thought kind of Skaven, so I did kind of guess it, but uh, yeah, and in, in my limited knowledge. In, uh, yeah, and you know, I also wonder if the uh, 
the video game, uh, what is it, uh, Battle March, uh, Mar no, Marks of Chaos, the RTS that came out, the, uh, the Skaven fought the, uh, High Elves, which, that whole story mode's kind of funny, because the Chaos Lord wanted to get over to Ulthwan, and then he's like, I have no ships, and the Skavens are like, no problem, we'll just tunnel under the fucking ocean, so, <laughs> and so they did. Effective. Awesome scenes. Uh, it also appears greater demon plastic kits will be coming in August, which is exciting. That's suggested over in the Warseer forums. Be nice to see some new greater demons because they've been around for a little while. Uh, Lord Inquisitor, there's been a big promotional update um, for the unofficial but actually sanctioned by Games Workshop uh, animated film that's coming out. Um, Erasmus Brezdur, uh, Brezdur, yeah, the director, 3D artist, has released uh, yeah a new eight minute video talking about things that are going on. They've got um, Aaron Dembski bouting rewriting the whole thing for them. The musician they used from the Ultramarines. It's going to be a full on 40 minute film, but currently they're working on a prologue which will be about eight minutes coming out next year. But yeah, it's just very odd that the Games Workshop are supportive, even though it's a completely an unofficial thing. Uh, and I did. Pr oh, sorry, Savage, Karen. You're really quiet. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, but they 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 might they they maybe. I think they just they like it. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. So I think Games Workshop were like, yeah, we can't we can't complain we'll, when we made an official film that looks half as good as this. So yeah, that's exciting. And the, the even the guy himself, he's looking for all sorts of artists, and he said, if you think Ultramarines is well animated, do not apply. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just thought was awesome. <laughs> um. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, and moving on to the series, we have some Eldar rumours. Um, we've got a bunch... I'll blap through a few short things we've got, and then we've all got some things we've picked out of here. So it looks like they're going to be up for pre-order on the th March the 24th, the Eldar, which will be very exciting. Um, it appears it's gonna definitely going to be a limited edition codex, but... Did we, you say March the that. 24th, or...? Oh, May the 24th, oh. sorry. <laughs> I did say March the 24th, like, but sure, yeah. Damn it, I end, missed end it. End of this one, sorry. May 24th. Yeah. Uh, yeah These so rumors are so fresh. They, uh, <laughs> they've already been released. <laughs> it's like a white wall. <laughs> this, this is very true. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'll wipe the rabbit from my chin start again. Uh, limited edition codex, uh, obviously. We, they love their limited edition codex. A new three jet bike pack together. There's going to be a new avatar, flyer, and a new Wraith Guard box set. And apparently, this is all being confirmed by an anonymous Games Workshop shop manager. Um, the Elder Flyer itself, I think we have a, a, a mock up of the Elder Flyer. Uh, I think so. I'll uh, have a look. <laughs> all right. Um, yes. There we go. Yeah, you are, you are seeing this right. That That's apparently yeah. the mock up. So, this is a very different mock-up to the the rather phallic one we had <laughs> last uh, the week before. But uh, yeah, that looks very much like Starscream or some kind of normal uh, US kind of uh, futuristic flyer. But um, the other flyer, so it's apparently it's quite curved in nature with sweeping lines and a real head turner. Um, it's got a downward angling of primary wings, about thirty degrees. Um, the cannons are slightly angled down, but nearly horizontal. The engines are mounted in pods on the wings, and one weapon is the centre line of the hole, with each pod having, with a pod on each wing. The hemlock is going to have a single vertical stabiliser mount on the centre line of the craft, and the nightshade has twin vertical stabilisers that are actually 30 degrees from horizontal, one mounted on each engine pod. So yeah, not looking quite so phallic, but not looking quite so elder. So yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Games Workshop really screws this one up and it just comes out and this model is just the ugliest thing you've ever seen. I mean, how many times do they release a flyer and people are like, yeah, I'm not sure about that thing. Like, Forge World is or I don't I didn't put the picture in the slides, but Forge World has already released uh, an Aldar flyer and it looks like an Aldar flyer and looks all right. Um, they've, got, they've got about three, haven't they? Yeah. So just take that design, make it a little bit smaller, and throw it in. <laughs> Throw it in, you know, regular 40k. Like, don't, you know, don't use your brain too much to try and come up with this amazing design because it's probably going to turn out like crap. <laughs> but at least we've had a good laugh of it over the last couple of weeks. To be fair, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing what this thing's going to look like. <laughs> it's going to be this flying abomination. Very, very of, possibly. Like, 
pop culture references, some different like ships. <laughs> just glasses, just yeah, just black glasses over the hull. Yeah. I was into flying, but flying was cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so moving on from the fly, <laughs> there's the Elder Wraith Knight, which a- appears to be the, what the, the big huge thing that we've been alluding to over the last couple of weeks, and apparently it's going to be called the Elder Wraith Knight. Um, and there's been some leaked stats for the main gun, which is a pulsar lance, which is quite exciting. It's a primary fire mode, which primary fire mode, which is 36 inches, strength eight, AP two, heavy two lance, and it can overcharge, um, but it won't be able to fire the next turn for a 48 inch, strength ten, AP one, heavy one blast lance. So it's pretty serious, Steve. Big blasting going on. Very exciting. And then yeah, we all had a little look at some of the. There's, there's lots and lots of Elder rumours flying about, but I'm sure we'll have a bit more of an Elder-centred episode as the uh, release comes out. So, the uh, yeah, the Elder Codex has been written by Phil Kelly, and uh, yeah, lots of rumours have said come above the rules with it, so I will just pick a couple there. So, yeah, talking we talked about the, the Wraith Knight, and uh, apparently don't be surprised to see a giant Wraith Lord with toughness 8 and will not die, which could either be the Wraith Lord or the Wraith Knight so this is the big big thing we're thinking about which is going to be a bit of a bastard to put down to be honest uh, and also all of the all of the Eldar appear, appear to have universal fleet including the Avatar although the Wraith won't have that as well so yeah the Wraith Guard and the Wraith Knights and Wraith Lords will not have fleet so you guys had some other rumours and things you picked out do you want to crack on? yeah um I kind of the thing that I saw that stood out to me uh, was what everyone else already picked. No, so I had to find another one. So I picked uh, the jet bikes. They're you know a crazy unit for Elder right now uh, in their current codex, and it says that they are going to be moving to fast attack, and there's not going to be an independent character that will uh, make them unlock them for troop choice. So. Uh, again, I love that unit. Uh, I think last last week or the week before that, it was yeah the week before that it was unit of the week. So, you know, awesome unit. I still hope that they're, they're going to be just as good. Uh, again, how, like a bit of their rules are already in the the core rulebook, so that part's not going to change. Um, yeah, I'm just going to be really inter- interested in to see what this independent character that unlocks troop is going to be. Uh, you know, will will we see? These, you know, just Aldar jet bike armies. Yeah, you know, that that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, one thing on that that I was kind of curious about is like, isn't there a craft world that's entirely based on jet bikes? You know what I mean? Is that like their thing? And then all of a sudden, it's not a troop choice anymore. What is it? Uh, Sam Hain? Is that Sam uh, Hain? Yeah, yeah, Sam Hain with the Wild Riders. Yeah, so I'm just kind of like, well, anyone who played that, and you know, they took. Well, more than three units of jet bikes, they're screwed now. Yeah, well, I mean, it did say that there's going to be a character that would unlock them, so it all all means they have to buy another HQ. But I mean, oh, right, right. I, I mean, if you're probably if you if that's your craft world, you I mean, yeah. you're probably going to be excited uh, to to have yeah. a special HQ rather than be like, damn it, I got to buy another model. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's going to be at least one person out there that's like, new games workshop make me buy a model just to play the new codex. <laughs> Mm. Um, and the name would be tough. Yeah. So, uh, Rob, you want to talk about your uh, rumor that you picked out? Yeah, so, um, so Dark Reapers, Swooping Hawks, and Howling Banshees will, uh, they'll be, they'll have anti flyer apparently, and, uh, they'll see the biggest cost drops, which is really interesting because, you know, I, I feel like as Games Workshop, is writing more and more of these codexes. They're uh, they're adding more and more anti-flyer. I don't know if that's been kind of a thing. You know, they start off like, oh yeah, sir, you know, you got you got the fortifications. Oh yeah, you can upgrade missile launchers so they can you know lock on to to flyers. And now they're like, tau, ninety percent of the codex can shoot down flyers. And now they're picking three units to do it. And especially, it's kind of interesting that they're picking howling banshees. It's like, what are they gonna do? Like throw shit at it. I don't know if it said Howling Banshees are getting it, or if it just said Howling Banshees and those things are getting a point reduction, and then it was plus addition of uh, anti-air into the codex. I don't know, but I don't know. That's how I read it, because I, I agree yeah. with you. How, how, well, how would they take down a flyer? 
Well, you know, it would be really epic. Uh, I mean, we've all seen Lord of the Rings here. Do you remember that uh, scene uh, where Eomer just, like, stares at the, um, the, the uh, Oliphant, and he just gets his spear, and, you know, he just hucks it at it. He hits the guy, and, like, swerves off, and, you know, it takes out three other guys. I mean, how epic would that be? You know, they want it to be uh, more cinematic, right? You can throw a melt bomb into Carnifex's mouth. Who's not to say that, you know, a howling banshee throws its spear or whatever, you know, impales the pilot, and then... Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean that, that'd be cool, but then I, I would also feel like, wait, so that Howling Bench, you can throw a spare with Skyfire at a at a flyer? How come my snipers or my Space Marines with their guns can't shoot at a flyer and get a better shot at than a spare? So, but, no, it would definitely be cool. Maybe it flies very high. <laughs> so you can throw a spare better than you can shoot a bolter? Yeah. <laughs> if, if you were I'm... really high and throwing it down, and it's a, it, they're going to have a new model, so they may be even stronger than... Before, <laughs> no, I mean it. It would also be pretty cool if you know swooping hawks, you know, could take down these things. Like you know, they're they're coming down from the sky onto the flyer. You know, like three of them latch on. You know, stick some sort of uh, grenade or something, and then you know do a backflip off, and then watch the uh, the flyer explode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm you know with all this high elf reading, I'm definitely starting to lean more towards the Eldar now. So uh, I'm pretty excited to uh, to take down some planes. Um, scenes. Savage, did you pick a rule? <laughs> I think your mic's gone quiet again. I don't know what's uh, up with that. Yeah, I haven't been able to hear him like the entire show. <laughs> it's at like 100%. 100% boost? <laughs> no. You're, that's, it's 30% boost now. Drop the boost that's down lovely. a little bit. Okay, better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah, no, I just... It's Eldar. I'm not really a big fan of Eldar. So Fair enough. Okay. Nothing really tickle my fancy. The Eldar will tickle your fancy, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They'll, they'll find a way. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's move on. So have we got any more, or is that the end of no, rumors? That I believe that is the end of the rumor update. That's why I've just tapped my papers and moved inside like a professional okay. news reader. Uh, so we'll move on to our main topic, which is uh, the High Elf release, obviously. Um, although we're going to be going more into the rules during the lab. So uh, I guess I'll uh, throw it over to Fox and he'll uh, tell us a little bit about the general overview of the High Elf release. Wow. So where do I begin? Um, first off, you know, I, I think I need to, to say, you know, despite how kind of skeptical and almost negative views of Games Workshop recently, you know, I actually think, I, I don't think I've ever been so excited to be in the hobby since, you know, I first started it. Like, this book has really, really got me, you know, got my juices flowing and I really, really want to start playing some games. <laughs> um, yeah, that picture showed that you're going to get your juices flowing. Uh, you know, I don't understand. I was just trying to say, you know, I was going to do some laundry, I was going to take a shower, and I was going to read my book. <laughs> what? What? I don't know why I got 121 notes, you know. Weird. Oh, wait, you guys thought I was... Oh, that's gross. But, um, no, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's an uh, army book that has been written in the fashion of the other ones. Um, you know, fantastic release, some fantastic models. I was... You know, skeptical of you know the units and stuff like that because a lot of the uh, the new releases for some of the ar other armies, you know, I just kind of felt like they've been new units for uh, new unit sake. But uh, honestly, for uh, yeah, like the sky cutter there, you know, I was kind of skeptical. I'm just like a flying chariot. Like what useful? Like what use is that going to be? But then it carries you know a giant bolt thrower and somebody has you know ranks of ten shooting a bolt into that is going to be awesome. The uh, the phoenixes are awesome. The two new characters are awesome. You know, there's there's not a lot bad in this in this uh codex and I'm for once, you know, I'm I'm starting to put my uh canon paranoia aside and I'm possibly gonna take some dragons, some phoenixes. I'm very, very excited for this. So you know, um I guess you kinda you said that uh you know, the the new units actually uh are good and that you'd you take them because with the Tau Codex, uh, I did a top five for that on the uh, Dice Troop, and only two of the new units even made it into the top five. Three of them were just from the, you know, 
the rules changed a little bit for them, but you know, I, I find sometimes with Games Workshop releases they have these awesome models, but then you do look at the rules and you're like, mm, I could just take two troops instead of taking this one new elite choice, and it, it's going to be more effective. So you're actually saying that uh, you know, people will be taking these new units and they should be oh. taking them. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, I did my top five list for them, and I think the only new unit that made it onto the top five is the uh, the Phoenixes. Um, technically, it's it's two units if you counted the uh, the anointed of the Assyrian, which is uh, the dude on top of the uh, Frostheart Phoenix. Um, he's a uh, new Lord choice, and he he's the only one that can mount on the uh, Phoenixes. But um, yeah, I mean, I I've had a long debate and stuff like that, just just among all the different units, and I don't really think that there's a bad choice in this entire codex. I mean, so, so, someone said that uh, Swordmasters uh, should have taken the place of the Phoenix Guard, and, you know, Phoenix Guard are uh, widely regarded in, you know, the top five best infantry in the entire game. And, you know, it's it's kind of interesting, because Phoenix Guard, and especially with a new bit of cheese that I'll, uh, I'll get into with uh, rules with the Phoenix Guard, but, um, you know, someone saying Swordmasters should be on there, and I'm like, well, it kind of makes sense that someone would take Swordmasters against Chaos, Vampires, uh, Orcs, and Goblins don't don't have a lot of shooting, because while Swordmasters are the most squishy, and, you know, a unit of handgunners can easily make their points back just by shooting at them for a couple of rounds, you know, they cause the most wounds, so it's kind of like, it's almost kind of like the Eldar, you know, how certain aspects are good against, you know, they pretty much have their one thing, and they're not really great at anything else. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's not a bad choice in this, this codex. And, you know, I have that top five list, but I definitely say take the Sky Cutter. Take a Sea Helm with your Sea Guard. Take the Phoenixes. You know, try them out. What, what about the release itself? Um, uh, this is for anyone, really. Uh, what, what are the words on, I mean, Tau, it got released. People were just buying that up. You know, there was backlog. And, you know, with, with orders, like, have we heard word on whether this release has been, like, popular like that, where it's just been selling, like, you know, like the towel, and it's just, you know, people can't get enough stock in to keep it supplied? Well, the one thing with the uh, the Fantasy and uh, 40k players, I think that uh, 40, you know, with, with 40k, a lot of people play power armor, and, you know, I think a lot of people get sick of playing power armor, and, you know, with the with the tower release, I think it was, you know, the first great time that they're, you know, putting a lot of focus onto a Xenos race, and I think a lot of people were excited just to kind of jump on that boat and away from power armor. Um, fantasy is a lot more balanced. It's hard to say, you know, like, there's not a lot of people that are like, oh, man, you know, 50% of the players are Empire players, you know. Um, it's It's a lot more balanced. I mean, I think they're I think it's going to do well. I think a lot of people are excited. I mean, they are a starter set army, so I definitely think they are one of the most popular ones. Um, but I was able to go into my uh, hobby store, pick it up, you know, a couple days after release, you know, unlike Tau, that they just finally got a book in. Yeah, so. it, it surprises me how long it took Kyle's to get released. I mean, the, the, the starter set's been out for a long time now. Uh, is it... I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but it's like, it, it feels like if you release a starter set, you know, those armies should get released pretty soon after the starter set. Um, you know, and speaking of the starter set, is, is is that going to be um, buying that starter set? Is that are those units in the starter set good in the in this codex now? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think Seaguard have gotten a lot better because uh, one of the big updates to the rules, and I'll go over this very lightly, is the fact that um, units fight in two ranks. Uh, and then if you have spears, they fight in three. High elves get to always have an additional rank fight, so spearmen are always fighting in four ranks, which is insane. Mm -hmm. um, it also means that they get to volley fire uh, like that as well, so they're getting three ranks of shooting, so the Seaguard have become better. Um, the uh, the reavers, the uh, the horsemen in the uh, in the starter set, they're now a core choice, so they're like a troop choice. And uh, swordmasters have definitely become better because they dropped two points, and they also have a Jedi deflect, which is pretty sweet. Uh, you can actually take the uh, noble on a griffin now, so that actually makes sense because that was the one thing that kind of annoyed me about the starter set is, oh hey, you got this really cool you know guy on a griffin. Oh yeah, you can't even use him till two thousand points. 
like in an actual list, which is kind of goofy. But uh, yeah, definitely, Island of Blood is the best way to start. So you're getting what two call two call units, one rare, and then uh, two lords. Two yeah, you got uh, two lords or heroes. Uh, you got the Seaguard, which is a core, uh, Reavers, which is a core, and you got the Swordmasters, which are a special choice. Okay, special. Okay. So, um, Seb, you uh, don't play fantasy at the moment, but it's definitely something you're interested in. What are your thoughts on this uh, you know, high elf uh, release? Well, they're, they're a very pretty bunch, and they are definitely rather interesting, and I think my my recent obsession with the Eldar has made me kind of a bit more willing to to give a bit more time to the Elven kin. But at the end of the day, for me, and I'm sorry to say this, Fox, the the, uh, the the elves are just a bit whiter than white. They're too they're too good. And I I yeah, they're, they're, it's beautiful seeing the stuff. And I'm still trying to ponder how the magic holds the boat up if they need birds to pull them anyway. But yeah, they're they're a beautiful thing, and they're some powerful magical chaps. But I, I, but just a heretic at heart, so I can't kind of give myself over to the Phoenix look, Phoenix Kings. Fair enough. And uh, Savage, do I even bother asking you? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> so, so I think I think the big question to kind of finish off just the general talk about the release is, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, Games Workshop are throwing these these products out there to be brought. Uh, how many of us are going to throw down money? Uh, obviously, obviously you already have Fox, um, and you're probably going to throw down more. Oh uh, yeah, Seb, I think we got to know from you about actually throwing down money on high elves. Yeah, I've got someone I might convince to get them, but not me. Yeah, I, I don't know. I I like them, but it, every, but most of the fantasy armies I look at, I kind of look at them in the sense of how can I use this in in 40k, and the models that I really like. Um, I really like those uh, those arches, but they have like kind of like a summoned bow. Uh, I think that'd be kind of cool to use as uh, like the Imperial Guard Psyker units, how they all like join together and then like form this big uh, big template. I think it'd be kind of cool to have them all like they they summon their bows and they all like aim it up in the air and make this big large blast template as like arrows just rain down from the sky. Um, so if I if I was gonna put down any money on, on this release. Maybe them. Uh, other than that, you know, it's it's. Uh, I'm not into fantasy enough yet to put the money in. And uh, savage, no for you. <laughs> <laughs> I like you're just speaking for him now. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> I'll okay. just move my mouth and Toxic can just lip sync. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so um. So we'll get back to High Elves uh, later on, uh, but for now we have Shamehammer. Um, I don't think any of us really had something this week, but uh, Fox, you kind of mentioned about some typos or some bad wording in this High Elf uh, army book. Yeah, I mean... The one, the one thing I will complain about in this book is for the eagle claw bolt the rower. Hang on, let me, let me check. So for those of you who uh, don't play fantasy, I'll, I'll explain it to you. So instead of having a force organization chart, uh, you have something that's kind of like that, but you also go on army percentages. So your core choice, which is your troops choice, just 25% of your army list points has to go to that in order for that to be a legal list. Um, and then you get for your special, it has to be fi you can do up to 50%, and you have three choices. And then for rare, it has to be 25%, only 25% of your army can be rare choices, but it's restricted to two. Now, this is the rule that confuses me is it says a high elf army may include up to four eagle claw bolt throwers and up to eight in a grand army. So I went onto my Tumblr because I, you know, it's, it's kind of worded weird because it doesn't say I can take two as one rare choice. But I can take four, and you know I, I made the post, and then you know within five minutes somebody said, "Yeah, two count as one rare choice," and then somebody else says, "No, it only works if you're spamming them." And I'm just kind of like, so what's the difference in in the two kind of ways people see it? Uh, does it change much in the rules, or is it just kind of how you build your army list? Well, it doesn't change the rules, but I mean, you know, I I just mentioned I want to take some of the newer stuff. 
and uh, it would kind of stink if uh, I could only take one Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, and you know, and then I could take my Phoenix, or then I could take my uh, my sisters. Um, it's it's just kind of strange that I would just be like, you can take two, but if you're going to take two, you might as well take four, considering when all the uh, you know a handful of other army lists like dwarves. Uh, who else can take bolt throwers? Uh, orcs can take bolt throwers. You know, they can take uh, two as a rare choice. So I'm just kind of like, well, do I go on based on the assumption of those army books, or do I do it exactly what it says? In which case, you know, Eagle Claw bolt throwers kind of don't seem worth it since I can only take one, and then it's, you know, I only have my one rare choice. So, so is the I'm trying to like get my head around the kind of the way that it's kind of saying, but uh. So it's either you take like a squad of two kind of thing, or you take yep. four individually. Yeah, let me let me let me try to explain this. Um, say for example, oh, this works. Uh, you know how the Imperial Guard back in the day before they couldn't take squadron of tanks. You know, one tank was one heavy support mm -hmm. choice. You know, what if the rule said that um, you can you know you can take a layman Russ. You know, you can take up to. Uh, six, um, in in a in a normal game, or you can know after the two thousand point mark you can take twelve or whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say you take them in squads, so your first three heavy support choices would just be single lame and russes, and then after that you could get more. It's not you can put them into a squadron of of uh two. Yeah, does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I I think the the big part and why it's on Shamehammer is. You know, again, we, I mean, we've talked about this, you know, what nearly every episode uh, lately. Games Workshop are releasing these army books every month, and there's just mistakes in them every time, and it's just they don't need to be there, and it just seems like people are finding them very quickly. Uh, it just seems like are they how are they play testing these rules, you know? Uh, what are they doing to to miss all these mistakes? And it's just making unwanted tension within the community. You're turning people against each other as they're fighting over these rules. I mean, me and Savage have butt heads before uh, over these slight wordings. You know. Yeah. Y you know, and there's all the, there's also I, I I should mention that there's also the fact that it literally is what it says. But in which case, that's just kind of a very poor choice on their part. I have a conspiracy theory. The, the crown's coming out for the first time in a while. Um, oh god, hang with, on. With all the, with all the digital um, things they're doing now, with the automatic uh, FAQ updates and things, you could almost say they're not bothering to them that well, so they uh, everyone gets digital copies, so they get updated automatically. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? <laughs> That's just wasting paper. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not wasting paper if you buy the digital app. See, it all makes sense. <laughs> That's terrible. You know, you it's, go it's work funny. I was, to I was totally gonna say that, but then I'm like, nah. I, I'm I'm just coming back for an episode. I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't wanna be that guy again. It's it's. I mean, it's just crazy. I, I think it's just uh, they're rushing these codexes out, and they're just making mistakes. And if you rush a product out, there's gonna be a mistake with it. I mean. They rush Finecast out. Mistakes happen with Finecast. Then they're only just trying to get right. You know, uh, maybe, maybe they see it and they just leave it and then just it just out. to see people fight. Like Games Workshop are just the biggest trolls. They just like release these things, <laughs> then go on the forums and like, look, they're fighting about the rule. <laughs> Not just that. It's like see see how long it takes people to like pick up on it or see if people even pick up on it at all. It's yeah. I mean. I don't know. This is probably like what the third, fourth time they've been in Shame Hammer just about not getting these codexes right before they release them. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Maybe they read them in a dark, dark room <laughs> so no one can take pictures <laughs> of them and leak them. Well, you know that they are they are pushing these things out every uh, every month, and uh, this is actually a uh, Matt Award Dex. And when you think about it, he just released. Demons for Fantasy two months ago, so it's just kind of like they they might be working overtime. It honestly just you know it might be an honest mistake kind of thing, just because they're they're clearly 
you know, pushing these writers to get stuff out every month. Um, but do we know that, like, how do we know how long this has been kind of, uh, you know, like, uh, words not working? Um, how long have they been in the works for? Yeah, like, how long has it been finished kind of thing? Um, and, and, but, it, I mean, is that is that an excuse that you can... Like, would you give them leeway for, like, you know, sure, you're giving us these codexes every month. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you make a few mistakes. Like, Fox, would you kind of uh, give them more kind of leeway, you know, for that? Yeah, you know, I, I think I would. It depends on the mistake. Like, this one, I'm just kind of scratching my head. I'm not raging over mm -hmm. it. I mean, yeah, it's going to affect my army list in some way, shape, or form, and I bet it's going to be fact to be... uh to be clear on how it works, but um, I mean, I actually, I actually approve. You know, the new codexes, the new army books every month. It's definitely going to, uh, it's definitely balancing the game better. It's definitely making people more excited. Um, I mean, mistakes are going to happen if they are pushing their designers, because you know, no matter what, when you consider it, within the past three months, a guy released two books. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, like, doesn't that, don't they have like? some sort of playtesting division, some sort of editing division that we should, like, that's their job to pick up on these mistakes? Like, it just... But editing's always been a dodgy thing with Games Workshop, even with Black Library, like, even, like, I think it was Battle for the Abyss just was just full of a guy whose name changed a lot. They just don't seem to edit well. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, um, if... Correct me if I'm wrong, but this might have been back when I uh, when I was first getting into the hobby. Games Workshop would actually release the uh, the codexes like two weeks early to a uh, to a month or something, and they would just let people play the rules, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then the manager would just take the feedback and send it back to them. I mean, yeah, honestly, I think for playtesting, it's just like five dudes, and they just play, you know a couple games and they make sure they play, you know, each unit once. They play it against a couple different kinds of armies and then they call it a day. I mean I mean that's honestly to an extent what I think they they do. I mean you, you need to give it to people that had no part in in writing it because everyone's gonna read this codex differently. Uh, if 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 you wrote the codex and then you check over it, you're gonna miss it because the way you had it in your head how this rule should work, you wrote it down how your brain's telling you the rule works but it can be completely different from how someone else can read it. And it's just... I don't know. I mean, get it right. Because uh... they, they could just explain it to the editor. And if, they, if, if the ex explanation to the editor isn't good enough, they'd just be like, no, we weren't that pleased, because it makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's always been mistakes, but... Uh, I know. I just I just think that it's a consequence of Games Workshop's sworn to secrecy. The fact of the matter is they're probably play t the playtesters are you know like I said five or six people, mm -hmm. and they aren't they aren't branching beyond that. No, but if if they branch beyond that, they'd end up with uh, what happened with you in your room earlier. They just released it to the public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I, that's always something that I kind of thought about sometimes was do they release these uh, like are some of these leaks on rules so people will play test the rules and you'll hear back from the public through rumors and leaks and then you amend it like it's it's, it's a cheap way to get some some free it's a play very testers very nefarious way very just nefarious justify justify games workshop in, in, in James Roach's defense, as, as dodgy as the editing is, they are the, the facts has been out quite quickly. Like because we, we we had the main topic last week's, yeah, some, some chaos space marines and things. Have only been out a few months and demons and things. Yeah, uh, they have, but I'm not going to give them credit for that because how hard how hard does it take to write a paragraph <laughs> saying this is yeah. what we meant and then post it on a website? It, it, should, the, it should get to the FAQ. Like, oh. If 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 for a moment you down. <laughs> if if for a moment I can go into a biased uh, fantasy is better than 40k mode, this is the only mistake I've ever. This is the only thing that I've questioned out of all the new codexes that I've read. Like I've and never disconnect I've never... box. What I said and disconnect <laughs> box. Uh, <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, you know, I, I've I've read the vampire codex cover to 
cover. I've read the Empire Codex cover to cover. I've read Tomb Kings cover to cover. You know, there has nothing been like, oh, that's a little confusing. This is the first fantasy army book that I've read since they started doing Tomb Kings, what, four years ago? Um, this is the first time I've ever questioned it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that the pressure is a bit more on for 40K. Yeah, so. be be because... Uh, fantasy is superior than 40k and everything except uh, the sales and popularity. So, th so, so the pressure is more on the 40k people to get to get it out and get these rules uh, to done. So, no, I can agree with there, that. There was a lot of fantasy fact though. When 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 we had a look, there was fact. There was pretty fact for every book. Mm -hmm. Um. So we are running. Well, pretty long. So I think we'll move on from the shame hammer. Uh. Fox, because you're a guest on this show, would you like to hit Games Workshop with the Shame Hammer? It's my favorite card. Hit Games. Oh yeah. All right. So how do, how do we do this? You do just I make just a noise it? of the sound of a hammer. Doom doom. Law and order gavel. So that's uh, <laughs> that's the first time in three weeks that it doesn't sound like a whip. So <laughs> congratulations. And I also made this gesture. So. <laughs> uh, well with the pile theme. Okay, so uh, next up we have Unit of the Week. Um, I I want to throw down that uh, Unit of the Week just to add to the uh, to the topic. Uh, Hal Drake, that's my Unit of the Week because uh, I've been talking a lot about it, um, and other people have been too. And I think from all the the crap that it takes about being, I'm not going to use the word OP because I think that eventually when more 6th edition codexes are coming out and more anti-flyer is introduced into the game for every army, not just a few, it's not going to be as strong as it is now. But right now it's a very strong unit. Uh, and we do bring this up in Unit of the Week, strong units. Uh, I'm not going to not talk about a unit just because a lot of people don't like it. Uh, I don't like it personally. It's it's disgusting. It's 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 very good for how cheap it is, and you can take three of them. That is, it's disgusting, but it's very strong. Uh, Savage, uh, you're the you play chaos here. Um, you've taken a Hell Drake a fair few times. Want to say a few words on the Hell Drake? Oh, it's lovely. Uh, <laughs> it just bubbles marines, turns them to mush. Yeah. Everyone should take one. What is it? Strength six, uh, twelve inches, then a flamer, AP three. Yeah, it's a it's a template, so you're ignoring cover. So unless yeah. you're in a transport, you're dead. And then and what yeah. one once per game, it can twin link its uh its hits, correct? Uh, it can it, yeah, re roll pretty, anything pretty much. Yeah, yeah I think I think it was you like it, it one, twin links its its hits, but then because it's a template and you're already hitting, it goes to wounds. So it's strength six, you're gonna need two ups on most, you know, units. And then you're gonna re-roll that. So if you're hitting seven guys, you maybe missed two, and then you're gonna re-roll that. You're basically gonna hit seven guys and kill seven guys. It's brutal. I mean, like I said earlier in the show, you took down three squads of uh, long fangs in three turns. Yeah. Uh, Seb, you have uh, toying with the idea of taking some chaos marines in your demons army. Would you rock a hell drake? I, I'm very, very tempted. They are, but yeah, well, they, 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 they look beautiful. And I, I, didn't, I wasn't that aware of how they operate until now, but they sound disgusting. And, and especially because, like in the, the game we played after the show last week, my demons kind of poked a couple of your space wolves. And yeah, I, I that lost was, that, uh, that was it. <laughs> one thunder, one and a half thunder wolves. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it'd be nice to have something that can actually, yeah, chomp on ceramite. Um. Fox, I don't know what you play Dark Angels now, but for a while there you were reading pretty heavily on the Chaos Codex. Haldrake, what are your thoughts on it? Definitely one of the few flyers I actually like. You know, I think a lot of the flyers just look super goofy. Um, yeah, I definitely think it's it's probably the most effective uh, fast attack if I remember correctly. Um, and you know, I I think it's I think it's cool. Yeah, I I, I, I approve of it. I, I've never had a chance to use it, obviously, but uh, you're calling it OP just like flyers are OP, so... No, I'm not calling it OP. I'm calling it strong. <laughs> I specifically said I'm not calling it OP because I, I don't think it is. It's strong. It's, uh, it's 
I think all the codexes, and I'll argue this, I think all the six edition codexes are, are fairly balanced. Uh, yeah. You, you down with OPP? I mean, I used to like taking in my Imperial Guard unit the Bane Wolves, the fast attack option with the template. Uh, it was like AP3, poison 2 up. Uh, imagine that, uh, but it's a flyer. <laughs> uh, with more range. It's, it's disgusting, so. Heldrake, unit of the week, not much to say on it because everyone knows it's good. Well, just just for balance, it it lacks a tail. It does lack yeah. a tail. But um, for balance. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll uh move on from that. Heldrake, unit of the week. Try it out if you're playing chaos, and you will never not take one in an army ever again. <laughs> or a meager seventy-five dollars. Uh, you're going to get your use out of it, at least. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so we have the lab. So now we're going to get back into High Elves, where we'll go oh, yeah. more into detail with more of the rules side of things. Uh, so I'll uh, throw you again over to Fox. Um, All right. Anything you want to talk about? Rules? Oh, man. Do I have rules to talk <laughs> about, son? <laughs> All right, so uh, first off, we uh, we... Technically lost the uh, the speed of Yasirian, but um, we still have always strike first, so it doesn't matter. The entire army has always strike first. If you want to know how awesome we are, but uh, I mentioned this before, martial prowess is, I think, the biggest basic rule change. Uh, all our units get to fight an additional rank. All our uh, shooting gets to f uh, shoot an additional rank as well. So we have. We probably have more attacks than anyone else just for base. I mean, like I said, a a horde of uh, sixty spearmen, I believe they would get they get two ba three base if they're a horde, one for spear. Yeah, they are getting fifty one attacks with champions, which oh, is shit. which is kind of mental when you think about it. Yeah, I mean they are they are spearmen, so it's not devastating, but uh, we are. It uh it kind of represents you know how these some of these elves have been fighting you know since the beginning of time you know they were there for the first phoenix king and they're still just hanging around with spears so uh, yeah that's that's pretty cool uh, trying to think anything else oh we lost hate dark elves but uh if there if there is a uh, enemy army with them we get to reroll panic fear terror checks uh, whatever uh, what else. Uh, we don't have the uh, the plus one to dispel. I think it was plus one to dispel, but we get plus one to cast now. I'm trying to think what else we got. Anything interesting? Uh, that's it for basic rules that I just want to mention. He's about to dispel. I'm about to dispel. <laughs> I'm about to dispel my dark vengeance all over your chest and face, Darth Sebius. <laughs> I just like it how like you're talking about rules and our brains just wandering to the chat to. <laughs> but, uh, you, just, you, just, you just think about my laundry post. But I, I would, I would like to ask this though, because I, like I mentioned before, I did like the models of those, uh, those arches that have kind of like the mystical looking summoned uh, bows. Like, what are the rules on them? Are they, are they any good? Because oh, that's actually, unit I really like the look of. Yeah, actually, they're, they're, uh, they're definitely one of the interesting choices. They are archers. You know, they're, they're pretty good. Um, if you take the handmaiden. They uh, they become more powerful. They get kind of like a unit buff. So I would suggest taking them if you're going to take those. Uh, but here's the thing: is their bows are actually have some pretty interesting rules. It's called uh, arrows of Isha. Basic. What the hell, Seb? <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? Oh, I'm I'm fine. <clears throat> I'm fine. I, I I should I should mention uh, the arrows of Isha rule. Their when their arrows hit the enemy, they explode with justice. <laughs> <laughs> um, just this this white um, holy substance that goes on their face, and uh, anyways, in a more serious note, they uh, they actually have an interesting rule because um, if they're fighting any armies that are qualified in or classified as the forces of destruction, so basically an evil army, if you if they're shooting at anyone from an evil army entry, they get uh, plus I think two to armor penetration. So these guys basically are long-ranged handguns if they're fighting bad guys. These guys are ruining a Chaos Lord's day on so many levels. Sad times. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, definitely, uh, they're definitely something worth taking. Again, uh, I should mention, compared to the old Codex, you know, we, in the rare choices, you pretty much took repeat, repeat bolt throwers. Now I think rare choices are the hardest choice to make. Definitely out of all of them. 
Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, are I'll... their bows actually like uh, kind of like summon bows, kind of like on Skyrim, or are they just on fire bows? Um, they're they're magical bows because they're also the uh, the Ever Queen's. They're supposed to be like the Ever Queen's guard type thing. They they're basically handpicked by him, by her. And they just go around, and they just they just be badasses. Mm-hmm. So um, no, I I believe I believe they're just, you know, I haven't actually gotten too deep into their fluff. I'm not sure if they're actually like created through magic or they're a physical thing. I'm pretty sure they're magical water. I'm not entirely sure, but they might. I think yeah, they might yeah. Again, water. they spread their justice. They're made out of pure justice. <laughs> but um, what else? What else? Trying to think real quick of the uh, the big rule changes. Oh. Um, the uh, the high lore I should mention their magic lore first lore to have two signature spells, which is really interesting. Uh, you got your drain magic, which is uh, basically it automatically dispels uh, anything, which is uh, kind of nice. I don't know how many uh, remains in place spells uh, there are off the top of my head. And then the other one's a magic missile. Uh, the high elves are all about uh, balance, so it's kind of interesting how right off the bat you automatically have a choice of offense or defense, which is kind of cool. Um, and then also the passive trait for uh, the Shield of Safari, which is honestly the other uh, thing of cheese that I found, is uh, every time that your major Archmage uh, successfully casts a spell when they're in a unit, they get a ward save, they get a 6+, plus, or they get plus 1 to their ward save. Now, I'm going to put my mage into my Phoenix Guard because they already have a 4+, plus ward. Now they have a 3+, plus ward. Can I just say, oh my God! Like I know, I know, invulnerable saves. Storm shields. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, you know, they're they're pretty much a unit of uh, twenty storm shields for about three hundred thirty points. Terminators for fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, not 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 quite because their uh, the armor is still pretty uh, is still pretty pathetic. But um. No, I mean that's that's something that I'm going to be doing, and I think that's something that everyone should consider. Even the people that have been putting off Phoenix Guard, you know, I've made posts on it, and they're like, "Good God, like nothing has that high of a ward save that I can think of off the top of my head." And considering an entire unit has that, they're going to be tough to kill, man. Um, the is rest it one, of the is it one of those things that you could just like spam shots into them, and then eventually you'll start failing those saves, or uh... yeah, yeah, definitely, because um, yeah, and I mean. Keep in mind that when you do kill a guy, you're killing a 15 point per model guy, which is which is pretty insane. And these guys probably cause the least amount of wounds out of the uh, the three elite. So these guys, they're they're basically their purpose is to soak up blows, in my opinion. Which is why I like them so much. You know, being an empire player and a dwarf player first and foremost, you know, those cannons are gonna really ruin my day. And you know, considering that a cannonball will literally just go at a dude's face and then just it will just bounce off because of magic. You know what I mean? So that so that so they're kind of like average, but they can soak up damage. And if you don't deal with them, you know you have to deal with them, and yeah. they're gonna take the damage. But they're not gonna deal out as much damage as uh, other yeah, units. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I mean, they they have halberds that are coming at you with. Uh, they're gonna be striking first before you can even lift your uh, blade. Got weapon skill five or six? I think they're five, and then strength four. So they they do all right. Um, but you know they're not the uh, the 21 weapon skill six strength five or the uh, 16 weapon skill five strength six attack. So they're uh, they're definitely they're definitely your uh, your uh, center unit because these guys are going to be tough to kill. So uh, that's uh, that's the high lore. I definitely suggest taking it. I'm going to be interested to see if I'm going to stick with it compared to uh, lore of life or lore of shadows though. So. Uh, It'll be interesting to see that. Uh, we got some magic items. I won't go too deep into that because you know that's. I could talk all day about that, but uh, I guess I'll go over the new units real quick, and hopefully that will be enough. Uh, so, oh, first off, I should mention uh, uh, the uh, the Ever Queen or the uh, man. I can't. I have a hard time saying elf names, but I'll get better over time. Aurelia, is that how you say it? Aureli, yeah. Don't ask a us. We're, we're worse than you. You like <laughs> uh, the radiant? Um, she's pretty good. She's actually pretty good. Uh, 350 points. She gives a lot of buffs. She actually gives the uh, the natural ward save to um. Uh, you want to put her in a, your biggest scariest unit. Uh, can't take her to higher points games, and she's also squishy. 
So, just I I'm not sure. I think she'll see more fluff play purposes than actual competitive play. I think uh, Teclis is still the uh, the top character of choice. So, um, do you, do you see a lot of fluff that. lists in in fantasy? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like no matter what, your you know, it's it's designed so you know to an extent everything's fluffy. I'm trying to think if I if I've ever fought a list and I was just like, no, that would never happen. But honestly, I can't think of any off the top of my head. What about like spamming the same kind of like special array unit over and over again, like? Because that's, that's the kind of thing I find in 40k sometimes is people will use multiple units that you kind of look at and go, there wouldn't be multiple units in the one army of that. No, I mean, it it, it all still makes sense because, you know, you, you look at the Empire, someone spamming war machines, you're from Nuln because they have, you know, they have access to all the uh, the guns. You know, spamming White Lions or spamming Phoenix Guard, they're clearly, you know, from... Uh, Wow, and I just totally lost what uh, province the uh, the Phoenix Guard are trained in. Or okay, so you spam White Lions. You know that's that's clearly a a force uh, primarily made of, you know, elves from uh, Ch Trace or Charse. I forget how it said. Man, I'm so bad. I'm absolutely butchering the uh, the names. But um, yeah, it's uh, I've never actually seen anything that didn't make sense. You know, fluff wise before. So. Um, all right, so I'll go down the list. First Lords, uh, Anointed the Assyrian. He can take a Phoenix. He's pretty cool. His uh, his rule stacks really well with the uh, the the Flame Phoenix. So I'll talk about actually I'll talk about the Flame Phoenix. So basically, this thing's pretty cool. It it flies around like a screamer of zinch. It drops uh, really nasty damage on it. Really really good against horde armies like Skaven, Orcs or Empire. But um, when you kill this thing, it go it turns back into an egg. And then what happens is if they don't kill it, uh, you roll you roll d6 on a one you know a one or two the thing fizzles out on a three or four the thing explodes it gets a large blast template friendly or uh, or uh, foe it's gonna take some damage, but on a six plus you know this thing's coming back with full wounds, and if you put this guy on on the uh, the flame uh, phoenix he gets plus one to his roll. And the thing is, if you kill both of them, they both come back with full wounds, which is kind of why I'm just like, wow, that actually seems really cool. So, uh, Haldrake of Fantasy? Uh, this, not like, quite. This, like, flyer that, uh, very strong, hard to kill? Lots of damage? Mm, not quite, because it's still on a 5+, plus that it's coming back. Um, and also the character itself, you know, isn't super cheesy. It's 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 not a cheesy thing. It's an interesting choice. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's very few cheesy or unbalanced thing. It's an interesting choice. Yeah, that, that's so. kind of like how I, I kind of like saying from when you, like the Tau uh, Riptide, it, you know, it's it can do a lot of damage, it can do a lot of things, but, you know, not cheesy. It's balanced. It's interesting. It's just a fun kind of thing to play. Right. Uh, so, yeah. So I'll I'll try to speed up because I know we're on an hour and fifteen minutes here and that's going to be a record. So uh, I'll try to uh, to speed up as best I can. Um, Savage is kind of like sitting there like I just want to go on the internet and look at porn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Savage is a porn. <laughs> but um, probably another more. He's not waiting. Choice. Look at him. Look <laughs> at that face. <laughs> Your head keeps popping up in the chat. <laughs> he need, he needs his chaos codex, a bottle of lotion, and a sock, right? <laughs> But um okay. okay, so lore master of uh Hoeth. Uh fluff wise makes sense that these guys are coming in just because Hoeth is kind of a mage tower and um they didn't have any mages, but now it makes sense that finally there's a guy who, who does both. Uh interesting choice. He's basically a uh better sword master. He knows every single signature spell from all the lores. All the eight lores, not high magic though, and also he's a level two wizard, so he's he's a nice balance if you want casting and um, and uh, some combat. Uh, trying to think of anything else. Uh, the Sea Helm, Sea Helm's pretty good. He's a uh, cheap hero, hundred points. You can mount him on one of the what is that? Oh, the Heldrake. <laughs> um, you can put him on a uh, Sky Cutter. He can also uh, be an option for a Battle Standard Bear. Um, but the most interesting rule is uh, he can allow your 
your Sea Guard unit to reform when they're charged, which is really nice because you know you can put your Sea Guard in you know in a wider rank or something, and then when you're charged, you know he's like form up, here they come, and you know they they all they all go into a deeper rank type thing. So that's probably going to be the one that's definitely going to be in my army list no matter what. I uh, I definitely like him. Uh, Hand Manager Ever Queen, you're basically taking her if you're taking the um, the sisters. You know, in a decent sized unit, you know, she's alright otherwise. But that's that's her big thing. Uh two units move to core, silver helms and reavers. So you can finally do an all cavalry list for uh for high elves again. Uh Sea Guard dropped a point, which is a big thing for me. Uh what else we got? Swordmasters now have Jedi Parry, uh White Lions and Swordmasters are now thirteen points which they drop down two points, which is a big deal if you ask me. Uh, Sky Cutter, basically a flying bolt thrower. It doesn't get the repeat bolt thrower option, so you can't shoot six weaker ones. But uh, yeah, the fact that you can literally... Uh, the way bolt throwers work, I should explain this since you guys aren't uh, family... fantasy base. I almost said family. <laughs> fantasy base. The, um, we are family. <laughs> the, yes, we are family. The, uh, the way bolt throwers work is... You shoot, you shoot a rank, and at full strength, you know, it hits the first guy at full strength. If it wounds him, it goes to the next guy at minus one strength, and it just keeps going till you fail your wound check. So it's basically just impaling all these guys. So when you got a horde, which is ten wide, you park that thing next to it, you know, it's impaling a lot of rats. So that, that'll be a very interesting choice. Take the far flank. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty vulnerable, though only toughness four, so you can take that thing down with handguns, so use with caution. Uh, what else? Phoenixes. So there's phoenixes come in two different flavors: flame and fire. Uh, flame, you know, you got that nice reborn ability. It also can drop templates. However, it's uh, it's fairly it's fairly easy to kill, but uh, it can come back when the frost heart phoenix is kind of the opposite. It uh, it's a lot tougher. But um, the crazy thing about it is, it oh, when it's when it's in close combat, it makes the enemy always strike last. And it also reduces their strength by one, and that's kind of insane. So I'm kind of leaning, if I'm taking the uh, the anointed, I'm probably gonna mount him on a flame spire, but if I'm taking a phoenix, I'm probably gonna take a frost heart. And then you got the uh, the sisters of a Avalorn, which you know they they are they're basically they're probably the best archers in the game. I dare say they're possibly gonna be one of the best ranged units in the game. Uh, again. That, though since they're archers, they're going to die if anything gets in close combat, but bane of chaos players, bane of anyone who is the force of destruction, evildoers, beware. And that is my summary for the new book. Okay. Awesome. They sound immense. They really sound hardcore. Like, I'm generally worried about facing them in fantasy at any point when I get my chaos warriors sorted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're definitely always been a uh, powerful army. Uh, the whole thing is though, I'm gonna be writing an article because a lot of people, you know, claim high elves are pretty cheesy, but they are. Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty straightforward to beat. I mean, they're all. Nothing's really higher than toughness three, so you can get a lot of shots in. You know, you can get a lot of attacks, and they're going down no matter what. So uh, keep an eye out for that article on how to beat high elves. But if you're not, sh if you're not shooting them, if you're trying to get up up and close and hack and slash them, you've got them ranked up and ranked up and ranked up and they're all poking you with their spears that's insane yeah well keep in mind you know strength 3 I mean it's it's all, they're, they're only slightly better than I guess the equivalent of guardsmen or state troops um, okay it's there, there there are there are ways to beat them uh, I won't go too into it because again we're running on to uh, an hour and 20 minutes now well, so uh, I want to get my uh, my orc army going and I'll just uh, throw poo at them and uh, kill those warriors that have been fighting for like what hundreds of hundreds of years, and they die to a poo to the head. <laughs> so. Yeah, you, yeah, it's it's you know picture the phoenix guard. You know you're th firing your bolt throwers, you're firing your wall magic and stuff like that. It's like deflecting, then just like poo hits him in the face, and it's just like steam starts coming off, and he's like on the ground, like his face is burning off. No. This, this is the happiest Savage has looked all show. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about doo doo again. Yeah. Wait, orcs throw poo? He's like, <laughs> I, I see on the Dice Troop blog. Well, looks like I made my orc purchases. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing fantasy now. Yeah. So, um, that's cool. I think we'll uh, quickly move on to the last segment because uh, I think 
Seb had uh, something to say about that, and it is hobby tip of the week. So, uh, so Seb, yep. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a slightly different one, and it's it's kind of it's kind of very true, and uh, kind of also to keep you off my back a little bit. Um, because, but then Savage always seems to do less than me, so it's all right. But uh, just that. <laughs> That's like, why we have him on the show to make him not not seem like we're way too bad. Yeah, I think yeah, it definitely makes us look better. But uh, like having so many models to, to to make and build and cut out and paint and then do detail can be can be quite overwhelming and not like that everyone doesn't necessarily have massive of modeling every week. Me and Savage being particular examples, but because there there is just so much in the Warhammer world, both Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer Forty K. Like there's there must be thousands of books now. <laughs> like, I, I can't even think because I've got a few hundred myself like, so, um, there's always reading to be done there's all the ridiculous amounts of audio dramas there's even the board games that are sort of like Chaos in the Old World and things that are opposed to ha having to actually do quite so much modelling there are the ridiculous number of uh, games like I've, I've just started playing through Kill Team myself I don't know how I missed it to be honest but uh, yeah just started you, getting you on that you mean the Kill Team like the Xbox Live uh Arcade kill team, or you mean like the actual kill team from 40k tabletop? Oh, the the actual um orc one for the the Xbox Live Arcade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah, so I think me and Savage played that when it first came out. Uh, yeah. On couch not, co -op. Yeah. It's not 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 very tech, but it's it, it's it's a lot of fun. I just I the th the the thing of the thing for me is because it's it's been a, I only really started my army uh those a couple of months ago. When I joined the Hammer, but uh, I've always been massively in to the the hobby or the wider world for for that entire time. Because just for playing the games and reading the books and just keeping up with the fluff and stuff. So, yeah, if it all gets a bit much with modelling, just remember there is so much and absolutely anything and everything there. And some of these books and game things, some of them are, are really really good quality and and bring other facets and other armies and other things from the actual game itself. Makes it more interesting. It's like I I couldn't give a monkey's about the Eldar until I read the Path of the Eldar books, and now I want to move to Altiok. <laughs> so, uh, summary of your hobby tip: If you're getting burned out on uh, the modeling, painting kind of side of the hobby, uh, find an alternative, whether it be books, video games, uh, another game system within the hobby, uh, kind yeah. of relight that spark to get back into painting and modeling. Yeah, because there, there, there is we're very lucky with Warhammer that there is that much for us to get involved with. So yeah, get involved because it is there's such such a richness of things to enjoy other than just the modelling itself. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I was gonna say a hobby tip, but as by the time we do the outro, we're probably looking at an hour and thirty. Um, I'll I'll save that till next week. Uh, so. So I think we'll go into the outro now. Um, I would like to uh, thank Fox for joining us and talking about some High Elves, though I don't think um, it was too much too difficult for him to get on here and no, talk and, about it. And, and I mean, I'm going to be doing a bunch of stuff on the blog. I'm going to be doing a full read... <laughs> I'm going to do a full read-through. I'm just going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> High Elves. You're going like, to do like a... Audiobook of, of the Codex. From the Ten yeah. Kingdoms of Ulthuan, the High Elves march to war. They have stood guard <laughs> over this world for a millennia, defending it from the yeah. predations <laughs> of the demons. Hammer the episode of sixteen. The gods and the unthinking. Seven world. hours long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna do. You know, I'm gonna be doing um, tactics. You know, how to, how to be them, how to beat them. Uh, individual, you know, unit breakdowns. I'll probably do, you know, a full. Uh, a full review of the book, so I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, exciting stuff, and I'm, uh, like I said, I've never, I've never been more excited to be in the hobby than I am right now. That's good to have. This book. Uh, what else um, is going to be going on with you, uh, videos and stuff that's coming out? Oh, okay. So, um, table talks will be back Monday. Planeswalkers mosh pit is uh, to be announced. Um, yeah, and then we got some uh, fun stuff coming up in the summer with our uh, a super secret project that Brett and I are working on. And uh, I know uh, a couple of you uh, are aware of this. I know uh, Freud was right, is aware of it, and uh, we need to get uh, talking on certain things involving the 
project. Awesome. So, oh, yeah. I'm um, really looking forward to this. Seb, what have you got uh, going on? We've got, so this week we will have uh, Fluff Talk. Uh, I believe it's on Wednesday this week. Uh, we'll be looking at the Eldar War. And uh, uh, yeah, so will you be joining us for that? Are we Talk talking about. We are, we're talking about war, right? We're talking about war. We're talking then about the on as it. aspect warriors. I have, and, yeah, I have no time for your culture. <laughs> I don't need God to know your culture. Okay. I just need to know how to kill you. Yeah, so yeah, we're kind of yeah getting into the aspects in the Elder at War. And um, unfortunately, we would normally be having Black Vault next week as well. But uh, Brett has got other things that he has to be doing. So we are doing that uh, the following week. And that will be part of the Elder. Okay. And um, Savage, I think it's fourth, fifth week in a row. Uh, will we be doing some tactics videos? I want to say no, and then if if one comes out, everyone can be surprised. Uh, but let's just say no. Yeah, but um, I'll I'll be doing uh, <laughs> I'll be doing some more uh, top five lists. Hopefully, uh, I want to get a tutorial on making some easy display boards or even terrain boards. Um, again, like uh, Seb said, I'll be on uh, fluff talk with them. Hopefully, we'll be able to get some sort of tactics video out. But yeah, I mean, everyone kind of knows what I do. I just post stuff when I feel like it, so just keep your eyes out. And obviously you'll be seeing more pictures of uh, my painting and stuff. So I think that's it, and uh, we're ready to go. Uh, again, uh, there's a donate button on the Dice True blog. Uh, Rob we need we are uh, we do all this, this for free, and it's always going to be free. But if you do feel inclined, uh, any amount will, uh, will help out. Um... So, just uh, thanks for watching. Yep, good to be back. Uh, I'm sure it won't be my last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's nice to have Daddy back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy's gonna spread his dark vengeance. <laughs> mm, that's nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're going now. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Daddy, bye. <laughs>